So we're going to begin talking about section 2.1, which is all about density curves. Density curves. Okay? Um, and before we get into actually what a density curve is, I had a little bit of notational thing that's important. So far we've talked about how x bar is the symbol for mean, which is certainly still going to be true, but I'm going to introduce another symbol that also means mean. And that symbol is the Greek letter mu. So it's like a U with kind of a big tail going on. This is also going to mean mean. That's confusing. So why would we have two symbols that mean the same thing? Well, it turns out we're going to use x bar when we want to talk about the mean of a sample. And we're going to use mu when we want to talk about the mean of a population. Now, what do I mean by that? Let me just do a kind of a quick example. Let's say you were talking about uh, SAT scores. If I say the average, I took, I asked 15 Sacred Heart students what their SAT score was and calculated the mean. In that case, I took a sample. So we would say, I don't know, maybe for those 15 students, X bar might be, I don't know, you know, 710. They were good students. But if I talk about nationwide for the entire population, what's the mean SAT score? You might say mu is like, I don't know. 503. Okay? Again, this number refers to a population, which is basically everybody. This number refers to a specific sample. And so far, we've been mostly using samples, which is why I've had you use X bar before. Okay? Similar thing happens when you're talking about standard deviations. Uh, S, we've been using for standard deviation. But we're going to say now on that's the standard deviation of a sample. Okay. We're going to use the Greek letter sigma when you're talking about the standard deviation of a population. New page. Okay, so we've talked about... Uh, topic of chapter 2 is related to distribution of something called the density curve. Density curve. And a density curve is kind of an idealized graph of a distribution. Graph of a distribution. And a density curve is always kind of smooth. So what I mean by that is imagine we made a histogram that kind of looked, I don't know, if some test scores maybe that kind of looked like this, you know. Okay, for some reason a bunch of people did there, a bunch of people did that, right, something like this, I don't know. If you were to, so that's a histogram, right, that does describe the distribution. But a density curve has to do more with the population. So what you might say is for the entire population, you draw a smooth curve on top of it, and the red density curve then looks like that. Okay, so a density curve is always smooth and for the entire population. Let me just give you some examples. So there was one of them I just made. Imagine you gave some test, and a bunch of people did that, and a bunch of people did that. That might be a density curve. You know, for like the math SAT, or for things like that, you know, for example, it might be a bunch of people did, very few people did crummy, a bunch of people did in the middle, and then a bunch of people, very few people did well. That's a symmetric density curve. And all the same rules apply. We could talk about a density curve that is skewed right. We could talk about a density curve that is skewed left one like this that is bimodal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Well, what, is it, what do we know about a density curve? Well, how, what percentage of the observations are under a density curve? In other words, if I were to shade under this density curve, what percent of the observations are there? Well, clearly the answer is 100%, right? Same thing here. That's the whole idea of a density curve. What's the percent under the density curve? It's all the observations, so it's 100%. And what is 100% as decimal? Well, the answer is 1. So one of the key facts about a density curve is that the area under a density curve, area under a density curve, is always, always equal to 1. And that 1 basically means 100%. Okay? 
that leads to some kind of problems involving, sorry about that pause. So let's actually look at a density curve example, okay? And some of these examples with density curves involve a little bit of, so here's an example of that. So let's say there's a density curve, it's kind of the simplest density curve ever that looks like this. Okay, where I don't know, you've got something that looks like this, and this number is uh, 20. And by 15. So you call a density curve like this number is when it's a uniform density curve. Which is that it's totally flat, or the way it's a straight line. Well, one question would be, what is the number that has to be on the y-axis? So you think about what I said, the area of a density curve has to always equal 1. Well, here's this area, right? Okay. And what, for, what does that mean? Well, what shape is that? It's a rectangle, right? So you can say, well, the area of a rectangle is base times height. In this case, the area we know has to be 1. The base I gave you is 20. The height, we don't know. So what does the height have to be? Well, the height has to be 1 20th, or it has to be, oh, this is a decimal point zero five. Well, at some point, these density curve examples might look something like this. So I don't know, there's a density curve that looks like this. Let's say this number is 4. And for golly, this density curve looks like a triangle. And the question I'll ask you is, what does this number have to be like this? Well, again, the area of a density curve is always 1. In this case, we know the area of a triangle is 1 half times the sine, base times the height. We know the area is 1. This is 4. We don't know the height. So the of the Bruton equation is 1 equals 2 eighths. This would mean that 8 has to equal 1 half. And that is, or 0 0.5. Over here, we guess that this number is 0 0.5. So we can use geometry to kind of figure out some of the density. The other little wrinkle for a density curve is that if I do an example like this, I ask, well, what percent of the observations, part A, what percent of the observations are less than 7? And by that I mean 7 on the x-axis. So let's think about that. Here's 7 on the x-axis. And one of the facts about a density curve is that you can figure out that the area under a density curve, the area under a density curve, means the same thing as the percent of observations. So by that, what I mean is we're looking for the observations to be less than seven. So on the shade under the density curve, less than seven. And now if I can figure out this area, I'll figure out the next. What is that area? Well, it's a rectangle. Curve. So I get 7 times 0.05 is 0.35. So the answer to this question is u2 is 35%. Okay. You can imagine a similar situation if the density curve was a little bit kind of a different shape or something like that. Okay. Um, but most of the simpler problems will stick with some density curves that are like rectangles or do maybe triangles. Okay. What if part B of this question? Part B said, what percent of the observations are above 18 or greater than 18? Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Well, think about that. We'll do it in, in this one here, probably. Here's 18. So bigger than 18 is this right here. Okay. Going, what, what is this area? Well, this width right here is 2 times 0 0.05 rectangle. That's a point 0.1, which is point 0.5. Okay. You can imagine where that might get a little trickier. Like, for example, if I ask you to figure out the area uh, under a density curve that looks something like this. It might be a little trying to do geometry like that, right? Or conceivably, you can imagine cases we'll do later on with some kind of wackier density curve, I don't know, like this. Where, oh my, jeepers, we've got to figure out, like, this area. That really involves time. Okay, we're not going to need that much time. 
this one might be fair game. This one would be fair game. Okay. The last thing about density that I don't want to talk about is the idea of using a density curve. Just going to do a silly example. Okay, just make sure you can handle this. Here's my density curve. Let's go back to, I don't know, the triangle. Okay, this one is just four. Wasn't this point five? So, what's the mean of this density curve? Well, the mean of the density curve visually is the place where it balances. Okay, and by that I mean imagine that this whole thing is like made of wood or like metal or something. Or and you basically want to put your finger someplace on the bottom that makes it balance. Well, heck, if you put it right there, okay, clearly it's going to tip this way, right? So that's not that's not the uh, mean. If you put it right in the middle, it skews. I think you're going to see it kind of does fall that way. That's not right. Maybe you might have to kind of put it like I don't know here or something like that. That might kind of make it balance kind of intuitively. So I don't know exactly where that is. Okay, but visually. Where the thing balances as if it was a sculpture is the mean. That'll let you kind of approximate things a little bit. Like if I gave you some crazy density curve, like I don't know this, you might say, well, where would I have to put my finger to make that balance? Well, the answer might be, I don't know, maybe about there. You actually eyeball the mean. Okay? So mean is the place where it balances. Median is a little bit different. Median. Median is the place that divides the area into uh, one half. You guys remember the area under the whole density curve is one, so the median would be the 50th percentile, so somewhere in this triangular density curve, and we'll actually do the math in the next page, you can figure out where you will really draw some line where this area ends up being uh, 0.5, this area ends up being 0.5, and of course the total area has to equal 1. Okay? We'll do this example in the next one. So where is the median of this density curve? So 4.5. So we find the median. We know we want the area less than it to be 0.5. So let's just arbitrarily say, okay, somewhere here's some line. We put it right about there. Call that x. We know we want this area to equal 0.5. And we want this area to equal 0.5. Okay. Yeah, which one? Let's do a little geometry. This shape right here is a triangle. This shape right here is a trapezoid. The math's going to be way easier. Than the triangle. So let's do that one. So I'm going to say the area of a triangle is one half base times height. We want the area to be 0 0.5 or one half. The area of the triangle is one half the base. The base is this distance. That's x. The height we found before is 0.5. All right, point five. Now I've kind of mixed up my fractions and decimals. That's right, that we messed around. So we're going to say one half is equal to one half times x times one half. That's an x. Which gets us, let's go up here, one half equals, uh, what am I doing here? Yeah, one half equals uh, one fourth times x. Did I do wrong here? Oh, I see the problem. I did wrong. Forget this whole thing. It's a little bit tricky. Let's forget this whole thing because you see what I did wrong. I'll leave it in, even though it's a mistake. The height of this is not is no longer 0.5, right? So right here where I put the height is 0.5, that's no longer correct. You'd have to do a little bit of a tricky problem to figure out using slope what the height would be. So you know what? Forget all that. We're not going to do this one. The ones that will tend to do will tend to be easier shapes like rectangles. Okay, let's just forget this ever happened. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day.